Imagine a vibrant Atlanta where diverse friends and families grow together thanks to their access to walkable community centers. With the help of transit-oriented development, we can transform this dream into a reality. Understanding the benefits of investing in our city is vital for anyone with a stake in Atlanta's future. Listen as Amanda Rhine, Senior Director of Transit-Oriented Development and Real Estate, shares the vision that MARTA has for our city's future. All right, welcome everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. We've got a couple extra minutes here while Amanda is, is getting settled in. Uh, my name is Steve Sines. I started Urban Explorers of Atlanta. Welcome, thank you for coming to Proof Bake Shop for our, this is the second time Amanda has spoken to our group. She's, she's here to give us an update on transit-oriented development. So now she's helping to create a city that she loves and we all love. So please join me in welcoming Amanda Ryan. Um, so I'm happy to be here with you tonight to talk about transit-oriented development. Uh, so my role at MARTA is to oversee the Office of Transit-Oriented Development and Real Estate. In addition to implementing the Transit-Oriented Development Initiative, which is one of my primary charges, we also are responsible for asset management of all of MARTA's right-of-way, which is pretty considerable. So MARTA owns over 25,000 parking spaces within our system. Of those 25,000, less than half are used on a regular basis. So we have a lot of what Ellen Dunham Jones refers to as underperforming asphalt. So it's through our Transit Oriented Development Initiative that we're seeking to redevelop this well-located um, surface parking into vibrant pedestrian friendly communities. The TOD really is kind of the antidote to the auto-centric development style development pattern that we've seen in Atlanta over the past 50 or 60 years. It's really just people-centric development in your transit. So MARTA's objectives in implementing TOD are to generate new revenue to support our operations and improve service, to increase ridership, and lastly we're also looking to um, support local community development. Uh, so what we're trying to create at our stations is set forth in our TOD guidelines, but there are basically four foundational principles. We're looking to create relative density, so we really want to maximize the access to transit and, and concentrate the greatest amount of uses possible there, but do so in a way that is respectful of the surrounding uses and the surrounding communities. We also want a mix of uses. Uh, this serves several purposes. First, if you have a mix of uses, you're able to accomplish and, and have all of your daily need, needs met within one area. Uh, having a mix of uses also just creates a vibrant environment so that at any point in the day there are people milling around, it feels safer, it feels more energetic, it's some place you want to spend time. And then uh, having a mix of uses means that you have both transit origins and transit destinations. This is particularly important during rush hour so that there is a balanced use of the system. Great Public Realm is really focused again on that pedestrian environment. We want to make sure that there are wide sidewalks, street furniture, street trees, active uses at street level, restaurants, retail, things like that. And then lastly, we're taking a new approach to parking. And so what this really means is we're trying to be more strategic about how we handle the existing patron parking that is there and the replacement of that patron parking and incorporation into the project. Uh, we want to replace those spaces that are being utilized, but not every single space that's in existence because, as I shared, they're not all being used. So we're trying to be thoughtful about how we replace the parking and then allow for a, a sharing of during off-peak times. So that, say, on the weekends when park and ride utilization is very low for MARTA, uh, that those spaces can be used by the restaurant patrons or the retail patrons, or if there's an event in a the park, they can use those spaces as well. So we have six active TOD projects that I'm going to walk you through today. But we have King Memorial, Avondale, and Edgewood Candler Park on the east line and Brookhaven, Oglethorpe, and Shambly on the Gold Line. And then in Midtown, uh, we just recently announced our work on the Art Center Station. So uh, King Memorial is the first TOD project <coughs> I wanted to start with. Uh, this was the first one that we announced in our new TOD initiative, and unfortunately have experienced a lot of challenges on the project. So um, we, we aren't at a point yet where we are ready to start construction. What has been proposed by the development partner we selected, which is Walton Communities, is about 350 apartments and 10,000 square feet of retail. 
we've executed the ground lease in March of 2015, and so it, we've been ready to go for a while. But as I mentioned, we've encountered a number of challenges on the financing side, um, and it's also we had some historic preservation concerns because uh, it's directly adjacent to Oakland Cemetery, and there are a lot of important historic assets in the area. So um, we needed to kind of revisit the design of the project and um, go through what's called a Section 106 review process uh, with the State Department of Historic Preservation to ensure that our project wouldn't have a negative impact on any of those historic assets in the area. So that's caused a little bit of a delay as well. Um, but I did want to, to share with you something positive that's happened at the station, which is this mural that you see here. The mural is part of a program that we are implementing in partnership with Wonderroot and an organization called the Transformation Alliance. So it's just another opportunity to do something positive at the station and um, bring the community into the conversation to talk about their ownership of the station and reflect kind of their vision for their community. Uh, so King Memorial is the first, the next one we're going to do is Oakland City, then H.E. Holmes on the West Line, and then the last one will be Vine City. Uh, next is our Avondale Station, again um, also on the East Line. Here and at a lot of our other stations, we're fortunate to have um, livable centers initiative plans in place. <coughs> this is a planning process that is funded by the Atlanta Regional Commission. And it's really helpful because it provides a framework for what the community wants to see on the site. And what we're planning here is a true mix of uses, uh, 503 residential units, which is a mix of affordable senior apartments and condominiums, 40,000 square feet of retail space at street level, and 25,000 square feet of institutional space. So what this is, and what we're hoping this will be, is a Decatur City Schools Early Childhood Learning Center. Uh, so we're excited about that because um, daycare is a, is a use that we've talked about a lot as being um, a nice complement to TOD because then it allows for people to actually take transit to work even if they have a child that has to go to daycare which can be difficult. Um, we're in the process of executing our ground lease right now. How our process works is we typically will negotiate a term sheet with our development partner, get board approval on that term sheet, and then negotiate documents based on those terms um, and then move to execution. Uh, and then I mentioned the, the Federal Transit Administration. Um, they're kind of our federal governing body and they have invested in a lot of the property on which we are developing these projects. So they helped Atlanta to buy the land and the right of way we needed to build the system in the 70s. And so they still have an interest in this property, which means that they have the ability to weigh in on the project and ultimately their approval is required to move forward with it. So um, they're an important stakeholder in our approval process. So we're expecting to start construction this fall and um, I've talked through some of the challenges there um, that we've been able to resolve along the way. Okay, Edgewood Candler Park. So this is at the Edgewood Candler Park Station, also on the south side of the station in the Edgewood community. And what we're planning here um, is another mixed-use development. The first phase will be 224 apartments with 26,000 square feet of retail and performing arts space with a half-acre park in the center. Uh, we broke ground on the project in August. Um, so we're thrilled to have a project under construction. Uh, so on that site, there's a performing arts center. This is a new facility for an organization called Moving in the Spirit. It's a nonprofit organization currently located in Grant Park. Uh, they're being displaced out of their current home and we're looking for a new home. They have a lot of transit dependent folks that they serve. It's a dance school, a dance organization, but their objective is to empower youth and create leaders through dance. Okay, Brookhaven Oglethorpe University. So this is our newest rendering for this project. This is our largest site that's currently under development. It's about 15 acres on the east side and the west side of the Brookhaven Oglethorpe University Station. Um, what we are proposing here is another truly mixed, of mixed use project um, that will have 340 apartments, about 55,000 square feet of retail, 125 hotel rooms, 200,000 square feet of office, 100 affordable senior units and 107 condominiums. So where we are in the process right now, we have finalized our negotiations on the term sheet. We are awaiting board approval, so that's an important upcoming milestone. 
and um, we need to get through rezoning. And then once we have that rezoning in place, our development partner will have the confidence to go out and start talking to office tenants, hotel partners, um, and really start moving forward with uh, designing the project and obtaining financing for the project. And Shambly, one station further to the north on the Gold Line, this project is being developed through a joint venture of Patillo Industrial Real Estate and Parkside Partners. It will, it's entirely commercial, so it's about 80,000 square feet of office and then street level retail. And this is, again, this is another old park and ride lot. Shambly at one point was an end of the line station, so there was more parking there at that point than we need today since the line has been extended. So we're able to repurpose some of those surface parking lots that aren't contiguous to the station. And then lastly is Art Center. Uh, we announced it on August 4th that we had selected a development partner to implement transit development at the Art Center station. It's um, Cousins Properties. The site is about six acres, um, but much of it is taken up by the subway tunnel, the station, and the bus intermodal. So we needed to figure out a way that we could develop on the site while incorporating all of those uses with the least amount of disruption possible. So we have determined that there, it is constructible, there are no fatal flaws, so we're now moving forward and starting the negotiation process with them. So we will have a good community engagement process here for this project as well. There'll be lots of opportunity for input, um, but we this is gonna be a, a very complicated project. And I don't expect that if we are able to move forward and build it, that we will start construction um, any sooner than two years. So uh, I wanted to transition and talk a little bit about the upcoming transportation referendum. I wanted to start by just kind of showing you um, where we are today compared to where we could be in the future if we're able to implement the three um, expansion projects that we have been planning for for a very long time. So we have three expansion projects. The first is an expansion of the Red Line from North Springs up into Alpharetta. That's about a 12 mile heavy rail extension. The um, purple line here would be uh, an 8.8 .8 mile light rail connection from Lindbergh Station to the Avondale Station. And that would provide connectivity to the CDC and Emory University. And then I-20 East, which is a heavy rail connection, a heavy rail extension from Indian Creek out to Stonecrest Mall as well as bus rapid transit from downtown um, to Wesley Chapel Road. This is about an $8 billion scope of work, and the Federal Transit Administration, if you're applying for one of their grant programs, now requires that you basically provide a 50% match. So we have a $4, mil $4 billion gap that we have to fill in order to get this funded. That gap needs to come from a local jurisdiction. So the challenge has been coming up with that local match. And so in the last legislative session, we, we started working to try and get Fulton County and DeKalb County, and of course the city of Atlanta, to um, adopt a referendum that would allow for a half cent sales tax and that could fund these projects. Ultimately, what got approved by the legislature was a half cent sales tax within the city of Atlanta exclusively. So we aren't able to move forward at this point with the expansion projects outside the city of Atlanta. Uh, through the referendum that will um, be on the ballot this November in the city of Atlanta, we have come up with a menu of potential projects that have been approved by Atlanta City Council that could get implemented if the sales tax passes. Sales tax is projected to generate about two and a half billion dollars. The, the total program, if implemented, would cost seven billion dollars. So two and a half billion obviously won't cover that even if you're able to get two and a half billion dollars from the federal government. So um, there will be a prioritization that has to take place and a lot of that will be dependent upon what is viable and what will be competitive in um, the federal funding cycle. So um, I wanted to go through some of the projects that are on the list in a little bit more detail. Um, the two that you see here are high capacity heavy rail extensions of our system. So these are two that um, actually are within the city of Atlanta. One is an extension of the blue line 
west of the HE home station, which is currently under the line. It's about a two mile extension to um, 285. And then the other is an extension of what we call the Proctor Creek line, which really only has one stop right now at the Bankhead station. So it would extend that out to um, what is now West Highlands, which was formerly Perry Homes, which was originally intended to be a stop. And then um, we're looking at uh, a couple other high capacity transit options that would start be the start of those bigger expansion projects we talked about. So for the, the Clifton Corridor line, the purple line that you see here, that's about a two mile segment that would take you out to Cheshire Bridge. So that would be potentially the start of the line that would connect ultimately to Avondale. And then in orange, you see the bus rapid transit component of the orange line, which is the I-20 East extension. Okay, and so this map shows um, all of the new potential service that would be added. The green is largely Atlanta Beltline and Atlanta Streetcar. And then um, the orange is new bus service improvements. Through our comprehensive operations analysis, um, we are trying to improve the bus service. And um, some of those projects could be implemented through the transportation referendum in the city of Atlanta as well. So I just wanted to end on this slide again, which um, shows in the dashed lines what we're looking at as far as expansion is concerned. So again, I encourage you to educate yourself about the referendum coming up this November. Um, it will be at the bottom of the ballot. So persevere, make it all the way to the end, and um, visit the MARTA menu to get a, a more um, detailed understanding of all of the projects that are proposed and share the information with your neighbors. Thank you for watching. If you think it's important for other people to know about transit-oriented development, please share this video and get social with us at In-Town Area Homes. We are proud to sponsor this episode of Urban Explorers TV.